it doesn't have to be bad for you to let it go. That is the topic of today. Okay, this is just not coming out right. And I don't know how to make it come out better. <laughs> I'm operating in full permission mode this month. I need to permit myself to be as honest as I possibly can be, which is proving to be much tougher than um, I thought it would be because I have a lot of hesitation. And my hesitation is that I think I'm going to be misunderstood. But you know what? Let me just give it to you. Let me just give it to you straight. I'm reading from my own diary. I just penned this a few minutes ago. It doesn't have to be bad for you to let it go. That is the topic of today, okay? It doesn't have to be bad for you to let it go. One of the worst things that can happen to a young person who is being abused or who is suffering is comparison. I mean it. People usually tend to compare when they say, oh, you know, you think you have it bad. Compare your life to someone else and you're going to start feeling better. Huh. Huh. Let's see. What comparison does is it pretends to put things in perspective, but actually it is often used as a way to dismiss the reality of the pain and the suffering that we all go through and especially that young people go through. Now fast forward and those same children survived and are now in a better place. That's one of those things that people say that things do get better. And that's one thing that I can genuinely, genuinely vouch for. And if you happen to be a young person or even not so young a person who's watching this and who's going through a very, very hard time in life, I can tell you right now, things, things get better and you can make them better. It's actually genuinely in your hands. And if you feel powerless and if you feel like, yes, I know it's in my hands and things are still not getting better, I'm not doing right, don't don't give up on yourself. You're watching this. This is good. This is support. I'm here for you. Reach out to me. I mean it. Like my my details are in the description. Reach out to me. Okay. Carrying on. I'm just going to repeat one of the parts so that it links to the next part. Okay. What comparison does is it pretends to put things in perspective, but actually it is often used as a way to dismiss the pain and the suffering that a person is going through. Now, fast forward, and those same children, young people, just generally people, those same people, young people especially, survived their childhoods, they survived the abuse, they survived the very, very traumatic events which made them feel powerless and caused them great harm in whatever way. And now those people are in a better place, right? It's better than before, and now they're adults. But what they carry with them is the memory of the times that were much worse than the ones that they're going through right now. So just like we were told that we had to, you know, compare our suffering to someone else's in the past, what we do is we use that right now in our lives. We compare our suffering now, our relationships right now, our workplace situations right now, our income right now, right? We convince ourselves that it, these things are not as bad as the things that we have already suffered through in the past. My friends, my viewers, guys, whoever's watching this, comparison is the thief of joy. You must have heard of that before, and if you haven't, it's a very, very common saying. Comparison is the thief of joy. And naturally, the context that that comes in is when there's a little kid who has this little toy car that he gets as a gift, right? And he sees it and he's really excited. And he's like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Thank you so much. He looks to the side and there's another kid with a massive robot car. And all of a sudden, his joy has gone. So that's where people use comparisons to Thief of Joy because now the kid who was at one point very excited by this little toy car thinks, man, this is nowhere near as cool or as good as that kid's toy car, so this is no longer any good, right? But we do that kind of oppositely with our problems. We have problems, we have issues, we have discomforts, we have things that we find inconvenient, that we find disrespectful, that we find just so icky and sometimes inexplicably so because not all of us have the language to tell the other person why we think something is wrong or what exactly about 
that statement felt wrong, right? And I'm not saying that the things, you know, I'm not talking about individual triggers here where, you know, if, if you get triggered, my firm belief is this, if, if you get triggered by a certain word or, cer or a certain something, then I believe that at a certain point, you have to take responsibility for that and work on um, dulling that trigger for yourself, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about generally, especially repeated, repeated, Mm, what's the word I'm looking for here? I, I, the word that's coming to my mind is like a misdemeanor, but um, repeated, uh, deliberate, hurtful actions or something, you know, like just something that's just ongoing and it's causing you, uh, it's not nice. It sucks up your energy. In the end, this is all about energy. We all have the same amount of time in life, but we don't all have the same energy. So here's what you do. Comparison is the thief of joy not just in the case of, oh, the grass is greener on the other side, right? The, on the other side of the fence. On the other side of the mic. I don't know if you could hear me. I, I actually don't even know if you can hear me right now. I don't have my headphones on. I hope you can. But comparison is the thief of joy because we keep ourselves from joy through comparison. We keep ourselves from improving our situations because we keep thinking, well, at least it's not as bad as when I was, insert particular situation, particular relationship, particular workplace, age, whatever was going on. I feel like that silence has to be there. I'm going to repeat that. We rob ourselves from joy by comparing our current uncomfortable or bad things in life or situations in life with the ones that we have already suffered and survived through, thinking, well, you know, I already went through that and this is better, so. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you know, I'll just carry on. I'll just carry on this way. I, I mean, life is hard, isn't it? Life is, life sucks. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it is so draining living that way. Here's the last thing I wrote here, and then I'm going to go in straight off the top of my head, okay? If you want to upgrade your life, if you want to up-level your joy, seriously start noticing the things that you tolerate, the things that you endure, the slight or major inconveniences that you convince yourself to pay no mind to. Start paying attention to that. I'm done with the book now. Now, life is what you focus on. And there are certain things that niggle at you. Sometimes multiple times a day, right? Those things take up your energy. It's just a fact. Michael Singer wrote about it in his book. Anything that takes up your energy, if it's not creating some sense of positivity in your life, I think it can be changed. And I'm, trust me, I keep saying this in every single one of my videos. I am not a capitalist. I'm not telling you to replace your everyday objects and items with new ones. No, mend them. I'm going to give you a very concrete example. Where is this? Just out of shot. It's just out of shot. Okay, hold on. Right there. Do you see that hole? Right there. Do you see that hole in the curtain? That's been there since the day I moved to this new place. I'm going to get a needle and thread and I'm genuinely going to stitch it up today. Today. Literally in the next 24 hours. Why? Because I don't see it often, but whenever I do, I think to myself, a stitch in time saves nine, quite literally. I don't want that rip to get worse. I didn't cause that rip. I didn't notice that rip when I got to the house. <laughs> but now that I've noticed it, I don't want to keep thinking about it. It has to be resolved. And there are many things like that in your life. And I want you right now to commit to one thing that just makes you feel like, oh, this again, that you have been putting off and you just think, oh, it's all right. I'll get to it one day. But in all the days in between you right now and you getting to it one day, in all those days in between, you're going to keep thinking about it every time it draws your attention, every time it is within your eye line, you're going to keep thinking about it. And that energy is just not worth it. Most of these things are things that can be done within seconds. 
I'll give you another example. Let's say there's a t-shirt that you don't like anymore or that you don't wear anymore. Isn't it just time for you to give that away? Often I would tell myself, oh, I mean, I don't want to just give away one t-shirt. Let me collect up a bunch and then I'll give them all away together. But every time I look at that t-shirt, every time it turns up in the laundry, I'm just like, why is this still with me? Why don't I just give it away today? Do it so that you don't have to think about it anymore. Things don't have to be absolutely horrible for you to get rid of them. Things don't have to be torn for you to get rid of them. I just did that with my mic, actually. My mic was not positioned very well, and I just had to switch it up. And I did it before the mic fell off or before I think I might have had some audio issues. You know the whole phrase, you know, like, catch it in time? Catch it in time? It's, you know, in, in many ways, it's sort of a strange fa phrase because it's like, yeah, it's, it often talks about like an op opportunity slipping by and you've got to catch that opportunity in time. I feel like we don't seem to realize that the things that we tolerate, the things we endure are things that are draining us and <laughs> it's high time we caught those things and started to fix them. And I'm especially going to be addressing relationships right now because I am genuinely like that's in the forefront of my life and the things that I'm working on right now. I am doing things in my relationships. I'm communicating in ways that are authentic to me, but also make me so uncomfortable because I'm going to be going hard these days. So if any of my friends are watching this, if any of my colleagues or peers are watching this, become aware, okay? Be aware that no more Mr. Nice Guy for Nandini. Um, I think I am still relative, a relatively nice guy. I think I am very good at sta sandwiching positives and negatives and delivering them together. But um, yeah, br brute, brutish, brutal honesty. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite people on YouTube, they're called Energy. Okay, I N N E R letter G, previously known as the Tarot Priest here on YouTube. And a few readings ago, I don't really know when, I heard them say a line which struck me to my core. And they do a lot of that, so I highly, highly recommend them. But they said, radical self-love is radical honesty with yourself. Oh my god. Radical self-love is radical, self, you know, honesty with yourself. You've got to be radically honest with yourself if you want to love yourself perfectly. Why would you lie to yourself and say it doesn't bug you? Why would you lie to yourself and say, ah, I can do it another time, which, which of course you can do, but will you? Will you actually do it? And how long are you going to keep, how long and how frequently are you going to keep those things that are giving you no joy, no pleasure, that have little to no importance really to you? How long are you going to keep them in here? At least it should be a case of out of sight, out of mind. But if they're in your mind and they're troubling you, the time to work on them is right now. And if one of those things or some of those things are things that you think you need to up level up, up level up, what on earth is that? That you need to level up or work on or start to develop in yourself. Let's say you're not a good writer. You want to become a good writer. Let's say you want to be a content creator. Let's say you're just not courageous enough or you just don't have the skills and you know that because you've tried. Start working on it now. Think about the value cost. Last thing I'm going to say today. I'm doing a course to up level up, <laughs> to, you know, upgrade my skills, to learn something and get certified. Get certified in something that I've already been doing, but it's still valuable to me. I'm genuinely doing it because I want to do it. And in that, there was a book that was recommended and it was a hard to find book. And I found it on Amazon. Not that I recommend such a conglomerate to people, but I found it on Amazon. And I was thinking, man, I, I don't want to pay for this. Oh, you know, will I even ever read the book? But then I realized I really need this book. And you know what was like keeping me in that indecision? 
of should I buy it, should I not buy it, should I see if I can get it from somewhere. It was like less than 500 rupees. I think that's probably around six to seven dollars. And that would be just over five pounds. And as I sat there and I'd been thinking about it and searching for this book for at least 15 to 20 minutes online and thinking and overthinking and underthinking, I was just thinking, bruh, I don't think this much when it comes to buying a snack for myself. I can happily throw that money on things impulsively. What's stopping me from getting something that will benefit me? And why is it? Why am I overthinking this? Why is this occupying my mind and my energy and my space and my time when it's a 400 and something rupee investment and I'll have this book forever? And even if I forget about it, I'm in a financial position where I can spare 400 rupees for this book. Just do it. Just do the things that you haven't been doing that's taking up so much of your energy because you're overthinking things that do not need to be overthought, overthunk. <laughs> okay, that's it for now, I think. I'm not going to overthink it. My name is Nandini, and this is some radical, radical honesty. Comparison is a thief of joy in both ways. If you compare the things that are good in your life to the things that you think are better and rob yourself of that happiness because of what? Because of some lust? Mm -mm. Not, a, not a good thing. And that's not even something I can speak to because I am dead grateful for all the great things I have in my life. I'm even super grateful for the things that I don't have, like have physically, materially in my life because those things, those people, those relationships, those successes are so within reach to me. I really feel like they're within reach because I know I'm working towards them. And similarly, comparison's a thief of joy. When you compare your problems with the ones that you perceive to be beyond you, there are some people who believe that, you know, the people who believe in God, sometimes I've heard them say that God only ever gives you problems that you can manage. And that's a very interesting idea. To me, I mean, I don't believe in a God. I don't. But I do believe that circumstances make people. And problems are usually not, usually speaking, usually, right? They're not just dropped on a life like that. Quite often, we're creating our own problems or we're creating conditions for the problems in our lives to stay alive, to be alive. Stop, pause, rethink, get rid of the problem. You'll find ways. We all know. Only a few things, but we all know how to access <laughs> how to access more things than that. Okay, now I'm really gonna stop. My name is Nandini. You can contact me. Look at the description of the video. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Please subscribe because one of my big dreams is many, many more subscribers. I did not mean for that to happen with my hair. I've just come back because I remember the quote better. Radical honesty is the highest form of self-love. I believe that is what energy said. Radical honesty is the highest form of self-love. Let that sink in. <sighs> okay, bye. Thank you.